within the organization he's in partnership development can take it away great thank you gerald thanks again everyone for coming we hope you enjoyed today's program oh I'm, i have the pleasure of introducing jen dalton jen is the ceo and founder of brand mirror she has over 15 years experience in strategy marketing and coaching and in 2012 she made a gutsy move into the entrepreneurship space launching a branding business and becoming a certified brand strategist she enables individuals and companies to define their brand and differentiate themselves in authentic, credible, and relevant ways to their target audience and their target market. Jen attended Georgetown University as both an undergraduate with a double major in human resource management and international management, and recently received her ex executive MBA at Georgetown's McDonough School of Business in 2012. Prior to Georgetown, she worked at Capital One for 10 years in operations, marketing, customer management, and more. She's an active member of the Environmental Council and received several Circle of Excellence awards for contributions, both individually and as a team member. She's a REACH certified professional brand strategist, helping individuals define their authentic brand to achieve career and life success. We're very happy to have her. Jen, thank you and welcome. Yeah, thank you. Happy Monday. Yay. 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 It's hard. It's almost as bad as right after lunch. Um, but I'm very excited to be here today. Thank you again for having me. And you should have on your chair a handout. So what I'm going to talk to you about today, and we will on. So how to stand out on LinkedIn, how to be visible, how to really be found. So part of it is fixing your profile, but part of it is also being discovered um, and attracting people to your profile. Second, uh, Thank you if you want me to look at your profile, because I will pull up a real profile, but if nobody volunteers, I'll look at Ken's or I'll look at mine. Sure. Okay. Okay. Or Cheryl, or Valerie. Okay, yay, hands everywhere. Okay. Good. Um, the, the third piece is really around, who are you trying to get? Who's the tenure you're trying to get? And how do you really connect with them? LinkedIn is not a passive tool, I and mean, it can be, but it really requires tender, nurturing care. But I'm gonna give you ways to do that. How many of you, when you think of LinkedIn, you're kind of like this guy, where you're just like, I don't want to touch it, <laughs> I don't like it, or I'm not comfortable? Raise your hand if you're any of those three. Don't like it, not comfortable, please don't make me use it. Okay. Um, how about you're pretty comfortable, still not sure exactly how to use it? Okay. And how about you love it and it's the best thing since sliced bread? Okay, three people. All right, that's good. Um, Things are hard if you don't know how to use them, right? They're only as good as the user, it's a tool. So hopefully today you're gonna to come away with a lot of things. I do, I never leave home without a PowerPoint and a worksheet. So in front of you, just so you have this, when I assess a profile um, for LinkedIn, this is a pretty comprehensive list for what I look at and what I judge people's profile on. So if you look through this and you have questions about specific things that I don't happen to cover, please ask and let me know. Um, and then on the back, there are some exercises we're going to go through together today. If you have questions, I do want this to be interactive, so just raise your hand, I'll call on you and watch that, okay? So the six things about LinkedIn, this is pretty normal, but a lot of people miss it. What is your why? And we'll start with the foundation. This is sometimes a hard question. Why are you in the role you're in? Why are you in the industry in? What is it about you that is compelling and interesting? Everyone has their own story, no person is alike. But how does that come through on LinkedIn? A lot of people might start their profile by saying, I've been in this industry for 20 years, and you know, if I were to do it, you're kind of mm -hmm. And so the real question is, how do you bring your personal story, your why, without being cheesy, by the way, but really bring something interesting in? You have to be interesting for someone to look at your profile. How many people know the attention span of a person? Anybody want to guess? 2.5 seconds. Always oh, a little bit better than that. Six. A little Twelve. Too high. 12, 10 years ago. Eight seconds. How many seconds? A bullfish has an attention span of nine seconds, by the way. So if you stand at the fish tank, you're going to look away first. Just saying. All right. So what is your why? Who needs to hear? If you're writing for your profile for everyone, you're writing it for no one. It has to be relevant for the audience you are targeting. And I'll come back to that. Where? So what are you doing with your profile? But also, what are you doing with content? How many people use LinkedIn more than once a week? And by use, I mean post 
something, share something, comment. I don't mean you actually logged in. That doesn't count as easy. Yes. How are your? How many yes, times? I do it more than once a week because huh? I yep. post articles there. I so write you share articles? something else, but I ah, post what I write. Excellent. Perfect. So everybody else is less. It's how about once a month? Or less. Or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's okay. I'm not way, judging here. This is a safe space. Jennifer, will, you, will we be able to um, share my slides? Yes. For a hundred thousand no. dollars. I will put them in a PDF. I just ask that you not know, share them. These are copyright trademarked. Sure. Um, so what do you put out there? What's your evidence? Innocence when proven guilty, not credible till proven what? Credible, right? How are you convincing people that you're wonderful and amazing? How do you actually engage? I'm gonna give you some insights on that. And then when to share. If you're not doing, for example, like Valerie, at least once a week, then it will be much harder for you to be found. You are wonderful, let me just tell you that. That doesn't mean people are going to find you. There's 410 million users on LinkedIn. And the power users are doing at least one post, or I shouldn't say post because that's like writing a blog, one update or one like or one something a day. Okay. Business days. So 20 times a month. Don't worry, you don't have to work on Saturday or something. You can, but it's not required. So here's my question for you. And at the, the top of the sheet on, on this section right here, I really want you to get very, very clear. What are the three things you need to come across? What are you trying to be known for? Now I was talking to Noelle earlier, and she was talking about human resources. Can I share those, all right? Aviation, but what is it that you're trying to be known for? It could be an IQ skill, like HR, it could be a skill, but it also could be EQ. If you want to be known as someone that's curious, empathetic, what kind of, people say I'm a problem solver, please tell me more. What kind of problem? How do you solve it? Why is that interesting? If I read results oriented one more time, I'm gonna hurt myself. <coughs> so take a minute and write down three things that if someone came to your profile, they have got to know this about you. It could be that you are really good at analytics, but you're good at taking the data and turning it into strategy. It could be you're really good at setting strategy and a vision, and then actually executing on it, which by the way is kind of hard. Most people don't have both of those skills. So take a minute and think about what do you really need your profile to look like or to communicate. Three things. It's very important we cannot be everything to everyone. <coughs> My mother used to tell me you can't be good at everything. Well, she was wrong as most daughters do and then I realized she's right. It's true. Anybody want to share one thing they would like to be really clear, Pat? Internet research. Internet research. The queen of internet research. I love it. What kind of internet research? Any specific industry or field? Do you do it quickly? Do you do it? Do you just jump right I in? I know how to find things without finding 3,000 things that you don't want on the same. So sifting through thing. a lot of stuff, using the right search I know how to write it as you would a thesis inquiry to get rid of the excess and just get the queen of inquiry and, and internet. Okay. Don't lose that phrase. That might need to be in your profile. Anybody else? What else would you like to know or have on your profile? Michelle? Did you have a time? You're thinking? That's okay. <laughs> um, turning complex business and social challenges into communication strategies and tactics. So taking complicated messages and complicated ideas issues and, and issues and boiling it down to here's what you need to know, here's the action you take. Okay. That's a good example. Yes? I have a question. It seems Brilliant. like um, if it's not a very specific audience, and I can be more general, so if it's people that don't really know my area, then it's three different things than people who are really have in-depth understanding that I have to be way more specific. What do you do? Do you mind? Lobbying. Lobbying, what kind of lobbying? Like what industry? Um, tax and healthcare. So would your three things be about lobby, tax, and healthcare? Like is that what you're good at? Or are you really good at communication? Are you good at influence? What are the things you're fabulous at? Let me rephrase it another way, because some of this helps my clients. If I came to you with a problem, what are the three problems that I, if I came to you, you would know how to fix it? And you would say, Jen, that's a problem I am the best to fix. Don't bother calling anybody else. So another way, if you're getting stuck, 
on coming up with your three things. Why would I hire you? What are the problems? If I have these problems, you are the person I have to call. So if I reframe it that way, what's one thing that you would want to make sure people know? Not just lobbying, but tell me a little bit more. Yeah, a good policy analysis, uh, understanding and interpreting public policy. Fabulous. And so think about what are those problems you're solving? <coughs> because people are hiring someone to solve a problem. And so the more we can communicate that really clearly, the more people can understand and go, oh, peanut butter and what? Jelly, sure. right? Problem, person, this is it, this is the person, this is who I want to hire. If it's really general and generic, it's just not going to be get their attention. If we have an eight second attention span, that's going to be a problem if they're looking at your profile going, I don't still don't really know what this person does. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could it be general in the sense that uh, across industries, I would like to position myself as being able to help an organization grow? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, sometimes my clients need a little bit more framework. So I find if you have a framework, kind of like a railway, like a, a rail, you can go faster, right? Trains would be able to move without rails. So you might have something that's company related. Maybe you've been in government, uh, Department of Defense, and you know how that works. But you also have a transferable skill. I'm really good at growing companies that have dispersed virtual teams, because that's actually really hard to manage. So in LinkedIn, you want to make sure you have those transferable skills, but you might be leveraging examples of your current role, of course, as evidence and your past role. But yes, what are those transferable skills that you can take with you if you're pivoting and switching industries? You may decide you want to stay in the same industry. Anybody else want to share or have a question? Yes. All right. So mine is more general. I would love some feedback. I put uh, solutions-oriented problem problem solver for empathetic Solution solver. Solutions-oriented problem solver. Okay. What kind of problems do you solve? Interpersonal problems. Interpersonal, like what? Um, most, well, most recently in a position with uh, students. Uh, who were trying to chart their course, um, had issues with the way things were being run, just helping them to negotiate. So I think if you can come up with th that type of a problem, if that's the problem you like solving, working with students, navigating their choices, where they're spending time, that's a great example and it gives someone, you're not just a problem solver, because they don't really know what to do with that. But if you give specific examples, that helps somebody a lot more. Yeah. So over the last 12 years, I've worked in the film graphic infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, so I have all of these pieces of knowledge around how the how nonprofits work from governance to uh, hiring to everything in the to, um, so there's just I'm trying to find all the sexy that. stuff. That's mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, something about the uh, informed about the nonprofit sector. But, but you know, the nuts and bolts, and nuts and how bolts, they come yeah. together, and how to make a nonprofit work like a well yeah. machine. Right? So, if you had something like that in your profile, yeah. or somebody could go, what you call the sexy stuff, I'm not saying you should put that in your tipper, <laughs> right. right? But that you love knowing the nuts and bolts and making something work better, work faster, and be more efficient. And put those examples. But if you don't love your profile, whoever's reading it probably won't love it, right? Kind of like my 10-year-old son. I can't make him like school. He has to decide. Yeah. So make sure your LinkedIn profile really is expressing mm -hmm. what you're good at. And for women especially, not that guys don't have this issue too, but sometimes we don't own the results we had. If you did something, own it. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. All right, so the next question I need you to answer. Who will pay you for what you know? Is it <coughs> aviation companies? Is it a very specific role within a company? Let's say you work in innovation and you need vice presidents of innovation to know how wonderful you <coughs> are in innovation. But get very clear, almost as if you were writing to a person get very clear on who are those three audiences. If you have to have more than three, 
I'll let you have five, but no more than that, because then it gets a little bit ridiculous. Because it is about what's the value you bring and do is willing to pay for it. That is ultimately <coughs> the question. What do you bring and who will pay for it? Can somebody give me an example of an audience that they would want to know, that they need to know about? Or if you are networking in an event, who would be the person you would want to meet? An association executive. An association executive. ASAE. Mm -hmm. Going to association events. Perfect. And so knowing who they are, knowing the industry, <coughs> getting pretty clear. <coughs> and then, by the way, you can use that to find them on LinkedIn. And you can find where are they. Because on LinkedIn, not only do you want to know who your peers are, because you do have competition, I'm always sorry to tell you, you have competition, but who are your peers, but then who are you all trying to reach? Okay. Anybody else have an example? That was a great one. Thank you, Julie, for sure. Who would be your target audience? Who is that? Yes? Well, um, my case, uh, I worked in government for many, many years dealing with uh, the lower levels of public relations. So in other words, I, I was kind of like one of the grinders, so okay. to speak. So what I've done is try to reach out to reporters and associations, talk to business communication people. And I, I know that I, I, I've made it, I'm making a complete uh, leap yeah. from being in an area which is euphemistically called the intelligence community to something in the nonprofit or, or, or something maybe even in business. Mm -hmm. So what I've done in the last year is just kind of use LinkedIn and target particular companies that I'm interested okay. in. Yeah, yeah. And you, I don't think you've mentioned it, but I believe you will, the word pain letters. Yes. Um, oh, I sent a lot of those out. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm not doing it right. problems pains they have that you can fix. Right. Absolutely. And, and not saying, oh, woe is me. I can say, here's what I can I do for job. you. Yeah, you can say, look, I've been reading a lot about your company. I understand these are the challenges you're facing. I went through your annual report. These are the places you're selling. Here's what I'm really good at. I would love to come in and talk with you and make an offer. Here's what I think I can add. Desperate times call for desperate measures. If you're in a place where you want to be making that kind of an ask, what's the worst that's going to happen? They say no. They say no. What are they going to do if you don't send it? Of course, nothing, right? And so taking a deep breath, um, writing the letter, but it needs to be from you. You need to really believe you can fix it. It's not the same letter you send to 20 companies. That's like you need to have different resumes that you're using for different things. I do believe you should look for recruiters in general. Like Corn Ferry, you can go and upload your resume. So you're in their search database. Um, but executive recruiters may not always be the best place. I tend to still find word of mouth networking and great content draw more people. Okay. So LinkedIn is not your resume. For those of you that copy paste your resume into LinkedIn, please stop. Um, you can start with that. But it really is a lot more. And so some of the things I'm going to go through. LinkedIn is about telling a story. And we all know storytelling matters. But it's not just storytelling. It's also evidence. What are you putting out there that shows people you have done something? Um, it's about driving people to your profile. Your resume is a piece of paper. LinkedIn is your personal, professional website. If I Google you, which is usually what recruiters do right away, your LinkedIn profile is usually going to come up first. Hopefully nothing dicey or, or sketchy. Right? It showcases you, but the other thing is, how do you represent your current company? If you're an awesome brand ambassador on LinkedIn, that tells me something about you. Thought leadership, it allows you obviously to make connections, to engage, but LinkedIn is your personal, professional website that's searchable and digital. All right. This is also what I tell my clients. Telepathy is not a strategy. Okay, I said earlier, you've got to put it out there for people to see it. Personal branding is not something you should do alone. So if you need help, find a friend who believes you're amazing, sit down and do your LinkedIn profile together. Because you may not write the gutsy things you need to put out there to own your results. So don't do it alone. At least a glass of wine doesn't count to make you gutsy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, okay, so one of the frameworks I use is the Impress framework. When you go through your LinkedIn profile, I need to understand your impact. You came into a role, how was it different when you left it? And when you start at a new role, understanding what are you specifically, not anybody that could have come into that role, you specifically, what do you bring to the table? M for metrics. Show me the numbers. Now a lot of people think metrics is just, what was the budget? Did you run a PL? No. It could be how many people were on your team. It could be how many lobbyists did you work with. It could be how many communications did you release. It could be all sorts of things. Metrics just tell a <coughs> story. So what are the numbers that are compelling? And if you didn't own a budget, then talk about how much work you delivered and what was the outcome of that work. One that people, metrics and proximity, actually these first three, impact metrics and proximity, people mess up all the time. Proximity, what do you think that is? Proximity. How close you are to who? Who do you work with? If you don't tell me that you reported to the CEO, if you don't tell me that you were vendor facing, if you don't tell me that you were accountable for customer interactions, then I, I don't have a picture in my head. If somebody doesn't tell you a story, what happens? Do you make it up yourself? Right? If I am not controlling the words to define my brand, people will fill in that space. So think about what is it that you would want in your LinkedIn profile, proximity? Who did you work with on a regular basis? Paint a picture for me so that I understand how I should leverage you. Role. Sometimes people don't know what your role is. You have a wackadoodle title, or a title that means nothing. I mean, not the director isn't a great title, but director of what? So what are you accountable for? Engaging, please don't make it snoozeville. Scope and scale. Tell me about the scope of your role, and tell me about the scale. Did you change it over time? Okay. So as you look at your profile, go through this impress framework, and assess, are you clear on impact? Are you clear on metrics? Who did you work with, and what does it look like? So a lot of times people use, they don't use the space they should. Right, so if you look at the banner on my LinkedIn profile, what's, what jumps out? Anybody? What do I have? Your head for you. Be a noise breaker, not a noise maker. What else, do you like my headshot? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't have a great headshot, go get a professional headshot done. I cannot tell you how important that is. If you don't have a profile, people are 14 times less likely to connect with you. If you have a headshot and it's a selfie or on vacation or at the office or blinds in the background, you're worth more than that. It makes a really good first impression. I hate to break it to you, but we are image-based society. So get a professional headshot, it really will help. And if you need a referral, I. I love my guy and he's not expensive and he's fabulous. What about the background banner? <coughs> it's a visual, right? I made that in PowerPoint, saved it as a JPEG and uploaded that puppy to LinkedIn. So if you have a background, even if you're in the government space, let's say you want to stay in the government space, put a background photo of the Capitol. Put a background photo of the Kennedy Center if you don't like the Capitol. But use an image that speaks to your brand. Whether it's where you want to be working in a city whether it's an uh, office, um, you know, desk environment looks modern and sleek because you're all about innovation, whatever it is, but, but use this. So for me, I have my website and I have that I've written a book. You don't have to have things up here, but it's, if it's a blue space, it's not giving me an extra impact. So don't under leverage it. The other thing here under my name, how many people just have that as their job title or their last job title? Or maybe they're just putting seeking opportunities. Use key words. This is one of the number one keyword places LinkedIn will look. So I have CEO, reputation strategist, build a personal brand that cuts through the noise, LinkedIn expert, speaker, and author. People find me to speak through LinkedIn because I have those keywords up there. So think about what is it that you would use in that space. I wouldn't use problem solver. But if it's about career discovery or something else, 
use that. Evidence. How many of you have media on your LinkedIn profile? How many of you knew you could put media on? I'll show you how to do it in a minute. For me, I linked to a video of me speaking, complimentary consult, or interview, but you could link to, and this is the evidence, right? Evidence? If you don't have your own evidence, link to your company website that you last worked at. Link to a um, white paper that you think is fascinating that speaks to the industry you're in. <coughs> Give me something to work with so that I know what it is you're thinking, what you believe in, what you like. It could be a slide share, which was bought by LinkedIn. It's a PowerPoint. You can upload a PowerPoint as a PDF. So this is a slide share. Let's say, Ted, what would you do analysis on or work on? Can I put you on the spot? Do you mind? Sure. I'm sure that's the question. What would you write about? Or, or if I were to say, hey, um, Tomorrow is a free day. What would you want to go do analysis on, or write about, or talk about? Um, climate change and security. Awesome. So, what, could you tell me five things we need to do? Uh, five ways climate change is affecting our security as a country. Sure. Right now. Sure. Um, basically, it's um, creating an incredible range of economic impacts, which are going to create social disruption, which ultimately are going to get in the way of our actually solving the climate change problem. So it's almost like a death spiral. Death spiral. The death spiral of climate change and its impact on our security. That might be taking a bit too far. Provocative people. But you could write literally a five or ten page PowerPoint with images and headers because we have we all have DVD, right? But that would be evidence where I'm no longer having to be telepathic. If I were going to hire you to do climate change or security analysis, you could put together something to show me your thoughts and why you're interesting and compelling. So some of those people will take work, but if you have what I call bundles of knowledge, things about aviation or HR in the aviation space or how you find talent, or if you have things like that, then you want to share them. And that's one way to do it. I know it's a little bit scary, but if you're not like celebrating yourself and getting yourself out there, who is? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Except my mom doesn't know how to use her. Like she doesn't use a phone, but like that's about it. She can get texts, and she actually she has started to respond to them, but she doesn't certainly know LinkedIn or Twitter. So you can connect to um, a, uh, a company that you used to work for, like there's work product on their website. Is it okay etiquette to do that? Hey, if it's online, it's fair game. Okay. Obviously, that depends on certain things, right? But but if they have a YouTube video about a product that you helped work on, the link to that video goes on your LinkedIn profile. Okay. If there is a press release that you helped write or an article about a result of a lobbying project that is important, Absolutely, put that on there. Okay. Any of that evidence, so that so here's the deal. If somebody comes to your profile, what happens? Is it a dead end? Have you given them something to do? <coughs> can they call you? Can they email you? Can they look at a video and go, wow, she worked on this? What do you want them to do? If it's to reach out to you, available for consult on climate change and science, um, security you know, impact, right? What is it doing? If they come to your profile now and they stop because you haven't given them a call to action or, or a recommendation of what to do next, you're missing a chance. So I think it's really important to include work so they see it. Make it easy for whoever's coming to your profile. Don't make them have to Google you some more and find out something. Right? Google yourself, see what comes up, pull stuff in if you can. Yes? And when you say call to action, what do you mean by that? So, um, so for me, right, because I'm looking for clients, my call to action is, hey, you can have a complimentary consult. But for you, your call to action might be, hey, I recently wrote this report on climate change. If you have questions, please reach out. I'm happy to talk to you. Right? So the call to action for you might be a little bit different, but it's give them something to do. If you're worried about putting your email and phone number in your LinkedIn profile, <coughs> pick one of them. But you need to have something or else it'll be awfully hard for them to contact you. Okay. 
increase your chances of being found. So use your keywords. If you go back earlier, let's say pick five keywords, 10 keywords. If you wanted to put in problem solving, you could, but I don't know that that's gonna give you the biggest bang for your buck. Climate change, um, security impact for sure, public relations, communication. Um, think of the words that somebody would type in the search and see that you come to the top of that search result. You know, look to the person next to you and later have them search on a keyword and see how your profile comes up on their LinkedIn. Right? Where are you on LinkedIn? And I'm gonna show you how to check that out in a minute. One thing that people totally under leverage is projects. So LinkedIn only has so many words and you don't need to be a verbose person on LinkedIn. This is a little bit longer than I usually suggest. This is from my profile. But I would do two paragraphs, one about your role, what you're accountable for, one about your results. Projects. Projects <coughs> is a great way to put very explicit results in if you don't have a video or you don't have an article. You can say lead change management effort. You can say, you know, um, lead lobbying innovation session, whatever. Something that resonates, if you look at your resume and you're like, these are the top 10 things I'm most proud of throughout my career, embed those projects into your LinkedIn profile. And the last, last one on this particular page, get recommendations. If you have 12 or more recommendations, you will go up in search results. I would write, yes, I would write that too, like write other people recommendations, not expecting one to come in the time. But recommendations really matter, yes. Yeah, I just wanted to add something to the call to action. I think you have to give somebody an incentive. Absolutely. You want to tell them to do something, and then you have to tell them why. Yes. You know, you say, give me a call because I can tell you more about X, Y, and Z. Or exactly. Whatever. I think in, in Ted's example, if this climate change paper researched you and you have a panel coming up, call me. I'm happy to sit on the panel, for example. Or just to go out for lunch and talk about it because I love it and I'm passionate about it. That might be a little too informal for LinkedIn, but I totally agree with your point. What are people going to do? Why do they need to know you? Be clear on what you bring to the table. So. Keywords, projects, recommendations, um, skills. How many people have their skills updated? Uh, oh, she's like, I think so. Oh, yes, I did. Skills will be put in there by LinkedIn unless you go in and make sure they're right. So make sure your top 10 skills are the ones you want. LinkedIn's algorithm is driving this up in search results more. And so go in, you can go to this section of your LinkedIn profile, and there's a little button that will say add skill. And if you do that, you can go in and you can drag and drop them. You can rearrange them. You can delete them. It's not going to tell people that endorsed you that you deleted their lovely endorsement. <coughs> okay, you're not going to offend them your feelings. But go in and make sure these 10 are right. There, you know, there are 50, but really, like, very amazing at 50 things. Pick 10 and make sure these are right. Yes, sir. Can we go back to recommendations? Yeah, of course. Um, do you have like a target number of uh, recommendations we should aim for? Or should we get like 12. different people to recommend different aspects of what it is we're doing so mm. that if somebody reads all of the recommendations, they sort of have a comprehensive idea of our yeah, skill yeah. set? Love what you're saying. So typically for recommendations, what I recommend is that you write four sentences. So let's say Pat and I work together. And let's say I've left that job, I'm no longer there. I might reach out to Pat and say, Pat, I really value your opinion. I know you're super busy. I wrote a recommendation based on our work together. You totally don't have to use it. You can tweak it. But if you want to copy and paste it and send it in, that would be really wonderful. And to your point, Valerie, which is an awesome point, then you're controlling the narrative. And you're getting a recommendation written for you, including the <laughs> words that you want them to be using. Ideally, what's nice is if you have three or four for every role, so it shows a progression of recommendations. Um, so even if you know one person from a prior role or from two roles ago or three roles ago, I would reach out and say, and same thing, draft it and have them submit it through LinkedIn and you can show them how to do that. They just go to your profile, there's a recommend Valerie, they scroll down and then submit it. But the nice thing about that is it doesn't get stuck in LinkedIn email because you can ask for a recommendation from LinkedIn. So it goes straight to their personal email, you have control over the message, and it's very easy for them to grab and go, which is respecting their time. 
So that tends to be a best practice that I recommend. Yes? Are you talking about pasting somebody's letter of recommendation about you? No, I'm talking about just getting three or four sentences written, which you could pull from a letter of recommendation mm -hmm. if it's nice and neat, and send it to them and, hey, thank you so much for writing the letter of recommendation. I would love to have that on LinkedIn. Would you mind submitting it through LinkedIn? You could upload a letter, but it's not as pretty, and um, recommendations drive search results. So if you can get up to 12, that moves your results up in search because LinkedIn is saying, you have a lot of people recommending you, Therefore, you must also be amazing. So we want to move you to the top of the screen. <coughs> what do you do when you get recommendations from people, like, from people that you don't relate to? Someone recommended me for strategic thinking, which is not something. You're like, I'm the queen of the internet search. Why are you telling me this? Don't accept it. Okay. Or write back to them and say, hey, I thank you so much for thinking I'm good at strategy. Would you mind making a few comments? Yes, sir. You can write to the director or CEO on LinkedIn to give the recommendation. Then they can take what you emailed them and put it yeah. right on. Yes. Is that the best yeah. way to do it? Okay. I think that's nice just because then it doesn't get lost. Yeah. Just emailing it directly to the person and they can copy and put that into LinkedIn. I thought you said to the director of LinkedIn. And I thought, wow, the director of LinkedIn. Oh, the straight to the source. No, no, no. Unless, unless you have director on LinkedIn. Um, <laughs> you can do it through LinkedIn, but again, if your director or whoever you're reaching out to is not on LinkedIn very often, then that will sit there in their inbox and you're not going to get it as quickly as you want. And I would follow up with a phone call or grab coffee, you know. Think about your network and, and where they are. And if you need to grab coffee and say, how are you doing? Working on my LinkedIn profile, I really value your input. You know, be diplomatic. I just heard they don't know how to put it on LinkedIn. So if you don't ask them on LinkedIn, they don't. That's much easier for them to put it right on that you emailed them. Is that correct yes, or not? Yes. So I email them and give them instructions on how to post it on LinkedIn, included. Here's the thing: tweak it if you want. If not, log into LinkedIn, go to my profile, click recommend, and paste. Just click recommend. Yeah, okay. it's very easy. So like, if I want, if we were connected, I went to your profile and scroll down a little bit. It'll say. Oh, do you want to write a recommendation? Yes, I do. And you just click it. But a lot of people don't know how to do that. Yeah. And so I include that in the recommendation to make it easy. Okay. You can even include a screenshot. That might be overachieving a little bit, but. Um, so that means you have to write four different sentences for each of your 12 people, otherwise it'll all be saying the same. Yeah. You're worth the work. You're worth it. So if you're, but if you're using it from their letter of recommendation is kind of it's in their spirit, in their, exactly. voice, in their voice, and it isn't, you're not telling them what to say. Totally. And it, it really comes nicely if you just say, I know you're really busy, I thought this might help, you totally don't have to use it, right? You can write whatever you would like. I was trying to highlight these skills because I know when we worked on this project, these are the ones I just like. 12 recommendations per job? No, 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 overall. Overall. I mean, that would be wonderful, but no, overall. Overall. But that's why I think, you know, every time when you're in a role and you wrap up a project, write recommendations. If you've left your old job, write recommendations for the people you genuinely enjoy working for. Recruiters look at if you're writing them too. Because if you're a giver, not a taker, or a taker, not a giver, you want to be both. And it can, you know, give the other person goodwill towards you as well. So here's <coughs> other ideas for evidence. <clears throat> if it wasn't in a picture, did it really happen? If you go to a conference, if you go to a networking event, if you go to an award ceremony, if you go to a holiday party that's for an amazing nonprofit, take a picture, put it up on LinkedIn. Show people what you're doing, as long as it's professional and appropriate. Attending conferences. On LinkedIn, say, hey, I'm really looking forward to going to this conference. Let me know if you're going to be attending. Hey, I'm really looking forward to seeing the speaker speak at this conference. I talked about Ted earlier putting together a presentation. Put together a PowerPoint. If you have a perspective on a topic and you want to put some high-level thoughts out there, five thoughts about one concept, do it. It can also be a blog. But if you don't like writing and you like PowerPoint, PowerPoint. If you don't like PowerPoint and you like writing, I'll show you how to write a post in a minute. Obviously, you do want to have a social media presence. If LinkedIn is your only one, fabulous. If you're in PR, you might want to have one other. 
but that's up to you. It's just more work. So I don't think people should have six different digital profiles. If you are interested in a topic, host a meetup. If you have time right now to bring together people interested in a certain topic, this is obviously not related to LinkedIn, but host a meetup and start talking to people. Or go to a meetup. If you're in UX or internet or whatever, find places to meet people. LinkedIn is not gonna be your bullet, people. It will help you, you need to have it, but you have to have an in-person and a digital networking strategy to get your next job. Here's a blog I wrote on LinkedIn last year. 65,000 views. Now it was about the five mistakes you're making on LinkedIn, so it was appropriate that it was also on LinkedIn. LinkedIn picked it up and distributed it as well, so it got a lot of views. So if you're nervous about how to write a blog, please see me, I have a template I used on, on how to write a blog so it is mobile friendly and people want to read it. Um, but do write, again, telepathy is not a strategy. This will require some guts. I'm happy to hold your hand and jump with you, but you know, be gutsy. And then community, if you're a part of a community, how many people sit on a board? How many people volunteer? Do you have any of that on your LinkedIn profile? Mm -hmm. Some good, good, perfect. Make sure you do. Show that you are engaged and investing and present in the community. Even if it's not related to job market. It makes you a person. When is political or religious? I think that's a great question. Um, I tend to recommend people stay away from religion and politics. Or don't, but there's always a consequence. <coughs> so, you know, if you're more left wing, but a right wing company calls you and wants to hire you, and they look at your LinkedIn and they're like, mm, yeah, that's going to have a consequence, or vice versa. So there's always a downside, but if it's so important to you that you have to have it on your profile because it's who you are, own it and just realize that will have an implication. But that might be totally fine, right? You may not want to work at that company anyways. <laughs> there's just a consequence as for them. All right, so like, comment, share, endorse, recommend. If you're commenting, how do people know how to tag companies or people? Valerie, open them up. I don't know. So if you use the at symbol, then let me just pull up LinkedIn on one second. So if I, who, who wants me to write something about them? I'm just kidding. Um, so I attended a conference, Virginia Women's Business Conference last week, blah, blah, blah. And I could put, I saw at Talmar Anderson. Talmar comes over here speak about blah, blah, blah. She was wonderful and fantastic. So what that does is it lets Talmor know that I've tagged her in a communication. This communication also goes in her feed. So if you're looking at the Washington Business Journal and the top 10 winners of XYZ award, one of them is a company you're interested in, then I would tag the recipient and say, hey, really love this industry, love Washington Business Journal, congratulations to blah, blah, blah from blah, blah, blah company. Tag the person, tag the company. Even though you don't know. For sure, if you attended the event or you saw the award, think of something that you know makes sense. Like you might say, as a climate, you know, uh, passionate about climate change, love the awards given out, out last night, really, thrilled to see so-and-so from this company, their work in this field is outstanding. Absolutely. It's a compliment. It's better if you know them, but if you don't, I'm not saying like every day now you should go look for people to recognize and you don't know them. It's kind of the equivalent of posting something on Facebook saying, hey, this exactly is a really right. cool little yeah. video, but it's exactly. a bit more professional. Exactly. That's exactly right. And I wouldn't overdo it, but maybe once a week, if there's something interesting, share it. Or if there's an article in the Washington Post, great article from at Washington Post about this company featuring how they approach innovation in this sector. Really great read. Loved um, their point about blah, blah, blah. I don't really mean put blah, blah, blah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it makes you look like you're aware of what's going on in your field of interest. Bingo! That that you're connecting the dots. Yes. <laughs> You could have a wonderful page, which is wonderful to have a wonderful profile. 
I love it, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. However, if I see you putting stuff out there, and especially if it's about a company in the industry that you like to work at, people watch that. And either way, it gets you more visible. If you're out of sight, you're out of what? Not in mind. Now in a digital world, it's not about just having a LinkedIn profile. The bar is even higher. You have to do something. Do something with LinkedIn. It is just a professional version of Facebook, <coughs> Twitter. It's just a communication channel. But there's 420 million people on it. So try it out. And if you're nervous, email me what you want to write, and I'll let you know if it's good. And I'll send it back and say, yes, awesome, I love it. But yeah, you have to engage. You're just having a digital networking conversation. That's all. You know, you could have met that person for coffee or at a networking event, you might have said the same thing. I'm just putting it online. Yes? And Twitter, is people use it the same way, right? Absolutely. So to show, they write, they write, they write, they write, to show that they're engaged. Okay. Now I think liking is the least helpful. Maybe it's better than nothing. I would much rather you comment. Right, like the, the one up there is me saying, because I used to work at Capital One. My Capital One, my old team there won this big award. So I shout it out, hey, really, really great job, congratulations. Love what, and because I'm a small business owner, love what this marketing campaign is doing for small businesses. Now this one is a recommendation I wrote. It doesn't have to be any longer than this, three to four sentences. If there's some people that you want to reconnect with, let's say before you ask them for a recommendation, <coughs> go to their profile and endorse some of their skills that you know they want to be endorsed for. Right? Sort of tap them on the shoulder without emailing them yet. LinkedIn is not an immediate gratification. If you have a LinkedIn marketing plan, it's at least 30 to 90 days. I hate to break to you. You thought you were going to post once and get a job. It's impossible. But it's really about consistent over time. Right? One thing a week, one thing a day, whatever feels right for you. You don't want to say one thing a day and then not do it for a week and then you're kicking yourself. Set yourself up for success. But there are ways to slowly engage people and re-engage them and bring them back to you. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, you said before that LinkedIn, like you didn't need to have complimentary social media. Um, you had LinkedIn. I just wanted to talk about how you talk about that a little bit more, which is, you hear various things like, oh, you should be on Twitter, you should have a Facebook page. Depends. Yeah, so I'm just. Who's your audience? Let's okay. go back to the, the most important question Who are you and who cares? Um, and I mean that in a nice way. <laughs> Not like who cares. Like, who really cares, right? Who needs to know you exist? Because you have a value you can bring. They just don't know what you So if your people are on Twitter, your audience is on Twitter, and you know they are, and you know you can engage, engage. If you're going on Twitter just to be on Twitter, stop it. Like if you don't have a clear plan on these are the 50 people who are talking about stuff on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Pinterest, on whatever you name it, there's 50,000, not 50,000. There's a lot of places you can go on social media. But know your audience. If you're on Twitter and you're tweeting and you're like, no one's listening, it's because they're not. Because your message isn't connected with the audience. And Twitter is harder to make work if you don't know how to use it. LinkedIn, you can share stuff and at least people will see it. Take still still takes some effort, but Twitter is more complicated. It can be the never-ending time suck, like Facebook. Hold on, Facebook is All right, so searching. How many of you use the search function on LinkedIn? Okay, when you're searching, LinkedIn uses Boolean logic, which means you want to put things in quotation marks. Kind of like Google, you want to get really clear. Public relations in quotation marks and or vice president in quotation marks. It'll look anytime, and you could just put and, so that you want public relations and vice president search results to come up together. So if you're looking on LinkedIn, anybody have a search term they want to look up? Development. <laughs> what kind of development? In nonprofit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so these are the people that are coming out first. Obviously, it depends on who I'm connected with. But you can look at people, right, over here. You can look at jobs based on the search results. 
companies, groups. You can even look up posts, which are basically blogs on LinkedIn. What are people writing about developing a nonprofit? I'm gonna come back to that in a second. So while I'm here, what I wanna show you, up here, even if you have a free account, you can save this search and it will email you an alert on weekly or monthly basis. So let's say you're searching for a job notification or something in this space. You can save this search and have LinkedIn do some work for you. One of the other things that was new and different, and I'm gonna call it out since we're here, if you go under jobs at the top of the menu, can you guys see that? <laughs> under preferences, LinkedIn now has added a feature in the last month. You can let recruiters know you're open for a job. You're looking. This is the secret way to not let your current employer know you're looking. But it's also, if you're looking, a very direct way to put, I'm looking. And so you would just turn this on, and then you can put in what kind of things you're open to. So that just applies to recruiters, or? Yeah. Yeah, it just came out. Last week. I think it was like, before, before things came out. It was like the second week of the month. They got a brilliant idea from Silicon Valley TV show. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so the other thing I'll show you while I'm here. How many of you have a free account? How many of you have a paid account? So curious about paid versus free? Yes. yes. Um, so one amazing piece of news is your headshot profile is bigger. Um, your banner photo, I'm going to do least interesting and most interesting. Banner photo is bigger, so the photo behind your head. For which one, the paid or the free? For paid. Okay. I don't know, for free, everything's small. For paid, here's the big piece where it matters. One, you go up and search results, because you're paying for it. I can't tell you how much. I don't know. You go up and search. The other thing is, you get to see all of the people who are looking at your profile, more than eight. You can go further and further if you want. How many of you track your number of profile views? Okay. If you're not, you should. That will tell you if this whole thing is even working for you. Did you get 10 views last month? Fabulous. What did you do? Well, this week, October 29th, I added 17 connections, endorsed 10 people, liked four updates, commented on four updates. Those are the same. So yes. My views went up. This is why if you're posting or sharing something once a week, once a day, your views on your profile will go up. There's a direct correlation. Um, what else happened? I think I did. So anyway, so do that. The other thing that's really important, and this does not show if you have a free account. When you go into professionals like you, this is only available for paid. This will tell you who is LinkedIn comparing you to? So, why does that matter? Well, if your keywords are not working so well, you <coughs> want to be placed with people that you don't want to be placed with. If you're trying to be found for a climate change role, I'm gonna pick on you too, if that's okay. Then, if you're showing up with fossil fuels, probably not so great, right? So I can scroll down here, here's a personal branding person, Here's other marketing people, okay? And so if it's free, you only have this. You only have connections in your company. Professionals like you. So even if you did LinkedIn for free for 30 days, you could try this, change the words on your profile and see if it's working. Now before you guys get all crazy happy and wanna go change your profile, please make sure you turn off your notifications right here. It needs to be red. Otherwise, when you're editing your profile, it's going to tell everybody you have a wonderful new job. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 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 say that again. <laughs> Turn your notifications off. Before you leave this room, if you don't learn anything from me except this one thing, that's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but I'll do it. Turn off your notifications. Why? Because if you're editing your profile, oh, okay. it will tell people you have a new job, and you're like, all I did was change my title. All I did was fix my stuff. I don't have any job yet. Now, when you get your next <coughs> job, you can think about what you want to put on your profile, turn this back on, add your job, you'll tell the world you're wonderful, you actually have a new job, go back in and turn it off. Okay? 
that said, if you change your profile photo, it will tell everybody you have a new photo, which usually can make people come to your profile too. So I, I would suggest you do your edits at once if you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, my other question is, yeah. um, in terms of writing somebody, mm -hmm. I, I found that you can't do it unless you pay mm -hmm. uh, sending an email. Oh, that depends. So it says a link in. Yeah, so like. Two, two different choices. There are two different choices. So if I come here, and let's say I want to connect with somebody, do not click this button right here, okay? It's gonna send the default message, I trust you, please connect with me on LinkedIn, okay? Now, if I want to connect with Parker, I need to go to Parker's website, click connect, and write a personalized message. Parker, I saw you speak last week, I was really interested in the topic, I just wanted to let you know I really enjoyed it. We might be able to do some work together in the future, Either way, it'd be great to connect, and if I can support you in any way, just let me know. So we should always go to their website? Always go to their profile. Or to their profile. And submit. Okay. Now, what you're talking about is in-mail. Yeah, in-mail. So if I, so free and paid, there are a different number of mm -hmm. emails. So if you are actually <coughs> reaching out through LinkedIn, you might want to do a paid account. So basically you're saying connect with them deliberately <coughs> through your own search through their LinkedIn profile instead of clicking on any of the, oh, you might know these people, yeah. connect with okay. them. Yeah, I mean, so this is what I know. I know that these people looked at my profile. Now sometimes, and so I met her at a conference last week, I saw her on the conference on Friday. Ken's right here, hey Ken, good job Ken. Checking me out before I come to speak, nice work. Um, any of these people that I might be interested in, so Paul is the CEO, he looked at my profile, so yeah, and I reached out and said, hey, I noticed you're looking at my profile. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. Happy holidays. Keep it simple, okay? Let me just check my slides. I want to make sure we, we get through everything. Um, yes, follow quick question. So what if we have the thing where we can see who's looking at our profiles and we find out that it's a, a, a pro an organization that we applied for a job at? Then can we go after them? You know, because it always says, please don't call, don't send follow-ups. We'll let you know if we want to see you. Yeah. Can you send some sort of communication that says, I noticed you looking at my LinkedIn profile? I would just do a happy dance mm -hmm. and wait. Okay. Wait for a minute. Only it depends how long ago it was. Sometimes people are very slow in the interview process. And so if it were a week later, you could always reach out and say, I'm so glad you were looking for it. Um, Thank you so much for visiting our profile. I am very interested in your organization. If you have any follow-up questions, please let me know. It could be as simple as that. You're not asking, you're just saying, hey, if you have any other questions, please reach out. But, but keep it um, cool. Cool, exactly. No stalking, no craziness. <laughs> well, for a job search, and um, you're trying to um, possibly get an interview or a, an information interview. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I thought that there's always, you're supposed to go to the person who's one step down and then have them connect. What is the protocol for uh, trying to reach out to people for potential interviews? So I think um, informational interviews are the best thing on the planet. Uh, what I would do is reach out and say, I'm in this field, I'm really interested in learning more, I'm researching several companies at this time, would you be open for a five minute phone call or coffee, my treat, so I can learn more about what's it even like working at that company? You're not asking for a job. Do not ever ask for a job. Of Certainly not on your first LinkedIn connection, <laughs> and really not yet. Yeah. You want to build trust, you need to get a relationship built. They're not going to refer you if you call and say, hey, I noticed you're the second person down, I'd like to you to refer me for a job. Right? Not that you would do that. Mm -hmm. But um, go ahead and uh, directly connect with Be gutsy. anybody. Oh, yeah. Be gutsy. Yeah. Okay. I thought you couldn't. That's why they have the email. I mean, you yeah. may or may not know that, right? So if they're a second or third degree connection, you can, if they're not, then you're gonna have to use email. But you may decide, you know what, I'm willing to pay 50 to $90, depending on which one you wanna choose, to do that. But for 30 days, you can try the next level free, but then you need to have a targeted plan for 30 days who you're reaching out to, because then you're gonna be charged. Which might be okay. What's your budget for job search? You might wanna have a $500 budget for the next six months or something. Um, hold on one second. So we did search. What was your question? Yeah. Go in ahead. terms of um, either either connecting with people you don't know that well or accepting mm -hmm. connections from people that you don't know, 
I've heard mm -hmm. it's a good idea because the more you get out there, the more yeah. connections you have. That person might know somebody. <clears throat> um, what is, what's your thought? I am not of the opinion connect with everyone. I am a little bit uh, more this way from that. Um, I connect with people I meet physically, so you guys are all welcome to connect with me if that is useful. And practice your connection requests. I'm happy to, to be a practice person. I do connect with people that look like it might be an interesting connection. Like if I think I can do business with them or I can help them in any way, absolutely. For the people that totally look sketchy and I'm like, I really have no idea why you're just, like, trying to reach out to me, and you didn't even send me a personalized request, I don't know. I have hundreds of unconnected requests. Just don't. I don't. But I do believe, you, like, LinkedIn is a shame if you don't connect with people that you haven't physically met. You're limiting yourself an awful lot. You do go up in search results at 500, but a lot of it feels like it's not a, an authentic request. They just want to get their numbers up. So that's why I think it's important for it to be personalized with intention. Same on the acceptance side. Do join groups. So we talked about audiences earlier. If you have, you can join up to 100. I think that's a little silly. Join five of your peers and five where your audiences are. Share articles there too. Um, here's an idea. If you don't have a plan, you can't work a plan, right? So Monday, connect with someone. Today's Monday. If you guys want to connect with me today, fabulous. Or connect with each other, whatever works. Monday, maybe that's your connect day. Tuesday, share an article, tag the author, find an interesting article. Wednesday, invite someone to connect. Thursday, like and write a comment on an article. Maybe endorse someone, maybe write a recommendation. Friday, highlight an event you're gonna to go to, tag someone you're excited to see speak. But just have a plan. I put 10 minutes on my calendar every day for LinkedIn. That's it, 10 minutes. And maybe you just have your schedule. You want to do each day. Because if you're hoping, you know, you go to LinkedIn and you're like, what should I do today? That's going to be a really, that's a hard place to start from. Right? So start from here. Um, how do I plan? What do you want to keep doing that's working? What do you want to start doing? Get a new headshot, for example. Ask for recommendations. Stop tweeting if you're not actually tweeting. <laughs> Actually, it looks worse. Change. What do you want to change? So I like this keep, start, stop, change model. Think about what's working for you in person, what's working for you online, maybe get informational interviews. But what's your plan? You are worth taking 20 minutes to build a plan. And then I just make a reputation roadmap. Are you good with pictures? Got it? I'm going to send these out to you so you'll have them. What's your plan? Here's the way I think about it. You have to build awareness. If you're not putting stuff out there, people can't find you. Build social capital. Write recommendations for other people. Go to somebody else's networking event and support them. Help other people. Grow your own impact. Where are you at? Can you do pro bono work with Compass, with Taproot, with other organizations? Because you join as a volunteer on a board. What can you do right now in your off time that still keeps you relevant and practices your skills, even if it's write your own content. <coughs> Thought leadership, that's that last part, write your own content. Telepathy is not a strategy. Write your content, do research, write something you wish you could have worked on at your last job but you didn't get a chance to. Okay? So accelerate your impact. This is about having a plan. Don't get stuck over here. If you feel like you're in a maze, take a moment, pause. Build a plan, you will go faster, I promise. <laughs> Don't do it willy-nilly or haphazard. Block time on your calendar. Um, please, please connect with me. Follow up an email if you have questions. And definitely here is a resource. Uh, here's my email. Welcome to to reach out to me. I do answer him. Um, and I do complimentary consult. So if you have questions, just bring me, please, and we can chat. Um, hopefully this was helpful. You guys are fabulous. Thank you so much for your questions and engagement. And I will be around after this as well. To <coughs> Okay. Thank you so much. I think it was very insightful. Um, actually, I wanted to ask a question. Yeah, of course. If I could, um, we have been told through various speakers that um, getting a job nowadays, about 
is networking Absolutely. and maybe a much smaller 10 to 20 percent is through actually um, uh, applying, yeah. right? Yeah. So if that is the case, does this count networking through LinkedIn? Yeah. Should you be spending either that 80 percent of time either in face-to-face -face or in the uh, LinkedIn networking? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it has to be a blend. I think you have to figure out based on your audience and where are they. If they're online a lot, if they're on LinkedIn a lot and they're engaging digitally, <laughs> engage digitally. But I think the informational interviews, every week you should have at least one thing you're doing in person and one thing you're doing digitally. You can start there. And if you're like, oh my gosh, that's too much, fine. Once a month, once every two weeks. But you have to be out networking. And if you're not at the right events, please talk to me. I have to lots of networking events. I'm happy to share thoughts and ideas. Um, but you have to have a blend. It cannot be one or the other. In your industry, it might be 80-20 one way. Somebody else's, it might be 80-20 the other. I think it also depends. If you don't like digital, then yeah, that may not be where you spend your time. But if you're really good at it, and you're writing blogs, and you're really getting a lot of interest and views, maybe put a little more time in there and really, really get it going. But it does have to be a blend. But it is what works for you and what works for the role you're looking for. Any of those sort of not an answer, but sort of an answer. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really, would you agree? We have learned a lot in this yeah, hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and now we're going into a breakout.